Well, hello everybody. It is Friday night, the 12th of May. My goodness, we're already more than one third through the month of May. It just amazes me how fast time seems to be marching on, moving right ahead, whether we want it to move or not. And of course, uh, I just look at that, uh, all the school kids, uh, they're, they're ready to get out of school. We just uh, talked to my oldest granddaughter the other day. She's up in school uh, working on her master's degree in Washington, D.C. at Georgetown University. And she called the other day and she said, well, Mimi and Papa, I'm, I'm done with my first year. And uh, she then went through all the iterations of the things that she's got for uh, the rest of the time of this summer. And then after this summer in Hawaii, and then uh, after that, six months in Japan. So anyway, it's hard keeping up and the time just flies by. Uh, it seems like yesterday that she was living in our home and going to high school. And then she went to the University of Texas. And uh, our youngest granddaughter uh, will be getting out of school next week, I believe it is. Uh, and then she will be entering her senior year of high school for next year. So time marches on. You know, it's, it's great. And you know, we have to be ready. We have to be ready to realize the times that we're living in and the times of the Lord and what he has established from many years, thousands of years ago, the plans were set and placed in motion and they just keep moving forward upon God's time clock. And I'll put it this way, prophetically, the time clock moved farther ahead in 1948 we're celebrating the 75th anniversary of the re-establishment of the nation of israel and at that time god's prophetic clock took another leap because that was a prophetic event that took place where it was prophesied that in one nation, one nation would be born in one day. And that's exactly what happened for the nation of Israel. I think I've hit upon that before. But let me talk to you about the time that we're in this weekend. Mother's Day. Celebrating and recognizing our mothers for the blessings that they have brought into our life, just the blessing of allowing us to be born. That's such an issue today. It's such an issue today of just allowing a child to be born. My wife and I follow a pastor out in California, and I don't, I don't believe that uh, he's gonna mind me sharing this with you because he's shared it himself. It's his, it's his life testimony. Pastor Jack Hibbs was sharing the preciousness of life and how his mother tried to abort him and it failed because his father, who I'm not sure if he was still in the Marines or he had gotten out of the Marines, he was out and gone from the family for a period of time and basically told Jack's mother, I don't want to come home and find a child, a new child in the house. And so Jack's mother tried to abort him. And it didn't work. But you see, God had a plan. God had a plan for Jack's life. 
He has a plan for your life. And we have to look and thank God for the plans that He has established, for the timing that is brought into our life. And we need to be aware that in the timing we are in, with world events, we are moving closer and closer, closer than we've ever been before, to the rapture, where the church, where the body of Christ will be raised up from the earth and taken to heaven and being prepared to come back with Jesus to rule and reign for a thousand years. And that will be another time where many prophetic words will come to play reading through the book of Revelation, but leading up to the book of Revelation, the books of Daniel, Jeremiah, Psalms even, Ezekiel. Most of the prophets have looking forward. God gave them glimpses into looking forward. Then, of course, the greatest glimpse of looking forward to what God was going to do upon the earth was given to the Apostle John. And you see, those are things that God has given us so we can understand the times and the days that we're in. The last couple nights, it's been quite interesting. I have been having a dream that kept repeating John 10.10 10 and John 10.11. Now those verses are a portion of Jesus talking about his being the shepherd of the people and that people would hear his voice and respond to it. And of course, there was a great debate with the religious leaders uh, about what Jesus was saying. But you see, we, as the body of Christ, have got to be a people with open ears that will hear and eyes that will see and minds that will be able to determine the truth from those that will be trying to deceive us. Just get an understanding of all of the times that we're in. We can see the challenges we have in America. And we seem to be localized and focused in on that. But there are times going forth now in India, up in the northern state of Manipur, where there is a tribal warfare going on. That's the state where my adopted son, who is a pastor in that state, where one of the tribes, it's not his tribe, but another tribe actually that he and I visited are being attacked. Houses are being born, burned down. Churches are being born, burned down. People are being killed. And these are Christians. Other places in India, there's under attack. Pastors have been arrested and jailed for sharing the gospel. Oh, you see, these are some of the end days prophetic words that talking about the world. Plus, look at what's going on in Israel. There's major fighting with Hamas, Islamic Jihad, launching now, I believe it is well over a thousand rockets into Israel. And of course, Israel is responding back. What would you do? 
somebody's going to blast you in the face? Are you going to stand there and just take it? I don't think so. It does say to turn the other cheek. But you know, when they're out to kill you, you're not going to turn the other cheek. When they've said, we're going to annihilate you, you're not going to turn the other cheek. Unfortunately, a lot of those people in the Palestinian area are being killed by the rockets that misfire and land on their own people. We have got to be aware that all of these things are tied into various prophetic events. The situation going on between Russia and the Ukraine, the connections between Russia, Turkey, Iran, and Syria are not just happenstance. They're prophetically called forth. One of the Israeli tribes, Hebrew tribes, is the tribe of Issachar. And it is noted that the men of Issachar were those that had been gifted in knowing the times and the seasons. They had men that were gifted in understanding, and I'll just say the intelligence of their time, that would give them indications and warnings of what was going to take place. I was in that arena during my Air Force career. I was the chief of the Indications and Warning Center for the 5th Air Force stationed in Japan. And we had a wide swath of Russia, South Korea, China. We looked at those areas for what was going on at that time so we could be aware. We could re make reports back to our headquarters, back to Washington, D.C., back and forth, even to the President of the United States. So you see... Those things are indications and warnings, but sometimes you don't have an indication or a warning of something that will take place. There was time I got to call in the middle of the night from one of the guys that was on watch at our indications and warning center. And he said, sir, you've got to come in here right now. We have had a Korean airliner shot down by the Russians. That was totally unexpected. And that was two weeks of intense, intense pressure of whether in fact we could have gone to a shooting war with the Russians at that time, back in the 80s. We got to a point where we actually had fighter aircraft circling and waiting for directions of what they were to do. And we kept getting indications that the Russians were going to do this, they were going to do that, and then all of a sudden we found out they were trying to fake us out. And we were able to gain the information we needed to see that we were being deceived. And we said, we, we told our commander, we told the commanding general of 5th Air Force, sir, stand down. We don't need to be doing this. All they're trying to do is pull us into something we don't want to be involved in. And he listened to us and he said, okay, guys, we'll call them back. But you see, God is telling us to be aware of those that are trying to deceive us where he wants to call us forth. So I'm just going to share with you right now this prayer. Lord, open our eyes. Open our ears. And let us be able to see and hear what you would have us to know how you would have us to respond 
And as I spoke of Mother's Day coming up, we listened to our mothers. We knew their voice. And we knew that sometimes, yes, we would get a spanking if we had done wrong or we'd be grounded or whatever the discipline might be. But we knew our moms loved us. and They had something that they wanted us to do, to respond. And Lord, that's exactly your call upon our life. You love us. You care for us. You will discipline us. But you want us to have the fullness of life everlasting by hearing your word and obeying. It's our choice to come to you and to serve you and to be able to hear your voice to hear that trumpet call, to hear the voice of the angel that will say, come up, and in an instant, in a twinkling of an eye, you will bring us up, the dead first, and those of us that are alive. Let's look forward to that day, because it's the day that you have set aside for us, and that is the day that you have made for us and we will be glad in it. May you have a great weekend with your mother or your grandmother. In my case, my two daughters who are mothers are coming up to enjoy some time with their mother and they're looking forward. It's a set aside time that they have planned on for a number of months now and I'm looking forward, of course, always to seeing my daughters, but they're going to have a great time with their mother. And I wish you all a very blessed Mother's Day. And we will see you on Monday with Cast to the Right Side.